This week, I dropped by DCU to catch up with the Irish men's Olympic handball team. Earlier in the week, they took on both Belgium and Estonia in the bid to qualify for the 2016 European Championships. Before the games took place, we had the opportunity to meet with some of the players and the coaching staff to see how their preparations are going in time for the game. We have kind of a real good support system around us and we've been doing lots of work in the gym. Um, we're a developing team, so we have to do lots and lots of work, uh, both in the gym, on the court, and kind of in our free time as well. So. And has the team been together, the, like the amount of guys that you have now on the squad, have you been together for a while? Um, not so much, maybe. It's a really young team, so okay. I think the average, aim, uh, average age of our team is around about maybe 21, 22. Um, so we're quite a young team, but we've been working hard the last few months together. So. We're not really focusing so much on the result, more on kind of our own performances, um, both as a team and, and as individuals. Um, as I said, we're kind of a developing nation within Hannibal, so um, it's more about us working and, and trying to, to perform personally um, and, and our own kind of influence as a team, really, so much as the result. The results would be nice yeah. to try and get closer maybe than some of our past results, but more on the performance of our team, really. Okay, and how's the preparation been going? Yeah, pretty well. We've, we've had some uh, nasty morning sessions, but uh, we've got beyond those. I think we're doing okay with them. So you're getting put to yeah. your faces? Uh, 7 o'clock on a Wednesday is never, never a good time, but uh, yeah, I think we're doing okay. Okay, that's good. Best of luck to you and the guys. So, obviously, Olympic handball isn't one of the most mainstream sports in Ireland. Is there a particular reason why you were drawn towards it? Uh, well, actually, I went through the Green Giants Talent Transfer Programme. Uh, last summer so I went across from basketball where I played for underage national teams and I just took to it like fish to water it was great fun it's like all the lads are brilliant on the team and it's a real it's a really open sport like everybody that was playing and everybody really wants more people to come and play so once I had started I was able to was at like three or four training sessions a week just being able to keep going and build on everything that I was learning so it was just it's just a great sport to play. So the most I guess you need to transition from basketball yeah, there's, into there's a lot of um, transferable skills that you have, like just jump in, the defense is sort of the same, just a little bit more physical, so it's still, there's a lot of things that can come across. So how has the preparation been, like I suppose training wise, has it been similar or is it a little bit different? It is a little bit different now, it's uh, more physical than, really? than basketball anyway, yeah, handball you can really get stuck in and like push people around and grab onto each other and like kind of throw people to the ground some of the yeah. time, like it gets, it gets a little bit more fun, you're not getting caught for fouls and stuff, but um, it is the same sort of uh, build up to different matches and stuff like when you have a big match up coming up in any sport you're trying mm -hmm. to get your mindset in really have be mentally ready for it and just try to go out and play the best but best game you possibly can and of course these are huge games uh, qualifiers for 2016 is there anything in particular that you're kind of focusing on going into these games we're all just trying to focus on having like a real proper team uh, game like that we have no brilliant star on the team where like the only way we're going to win a match or going to play well is if we play well as a team so yeah, we really we have team goals that we're trying to set out like whether whatever happens in the match just to keep going and play in like two minute segments just that every single ball that comes just play it like it's a new ball every time so, so are you hoping for a big crowd here this week i would be brilliant if we could like it's a great facility here in dcu so if we could if we could pack it out it would be a really brilliant play Tony, would you like to tell us i suppose about what's coming up this week for your team and how the preparations been going yeah, the, the players had worked a lot in the last in the last month, not just in the last week, in the last month they were uh, made a lot of training sessions at 7 o'clock in the morning by their mm -hmm. own and with Yannick with some coaches that help us and also at the same at the gym and just this week has to be an opportunity to show to all the people this commitment and this, this work that they made in the last in the last month. So you're obviously you're coming across from Barcelona and yeah. you're, you're coaching the guys here. What's the difference like when you come here and see how this is an obviously a developing sport here in Ireland and obviously an established one in Spain? Yeah, the biggest difference is uh, we have a lot of facilities there to, to practice handball. We have a lot of goals. They start to practice handball at the school when they are just six or seven years old. I think it's, it's similar. There are some similarities around rugby in Spain and rugby in, in Ireland, perhaps. The, the, the level of the rugby in Spain is the same, that the level of uh, handball here in, in Ireland is the reason that we want to, to improve that and we want to, to show to the young kids that this isn't a sport that I'm sure that they, they like it, but we need more holes and we need more facilities to, to do it. Yeah, and, and obviously maybe a lot of people don't know about Olympic handball and how accessible it is here in Ireland. Do you think that Irish players, for, for, like, for, say for instance, rugby or, or Gaelic or hurling, do you think that they'd be well suited, suitable and adaptable to definitely, Olympic handball? Definitely, because here you like a lot of sport with a lot of physical contact and this is a sport that 
offers you the opportunity to do that. And I'm sure that when they test this, this sport, they will uh, stay with us here. What is the one thing that you would like to take from the two games? What's the most important thing that you would like to come away with? I think the most important has to be at the end of the matches, they, 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 they have to feel that they give everything that they have on their bodies. Uh, all, the, all, the, all the strength all that do they gave from the, the world the gym. Mm -hmm. And we, we must be happy with our own job. It's not about the score, it's about uh, our job in, in, in the end of the match. Well, best of luck. So okay, it was a huge week for the association and for the sport at Olympic handball in Ireland. Do you would like to probably explain to people at home? Don't we know that much about how you kind of established? Yeah, it's um, Olympic handball has been around and around for quite a while uh, since uh, 1975, I think, as well. It was brought over by a PE teacher from Scotland, um, and it's it's grown over time. There'll be a lot of people out there probably playing in school, and that was their one interaction with the sport. Um, but what we've tried to do now is to to build on that and make it a bit more visible. Um, sports landscape so this week gives us a great opportunity you know biggest games that we've ever hosted you know European Championship qualifiers um, and that was I guess part of the big strategy that we had for the organization which was really to take it from a, a minority sport that was kind of you know caught in a, in a rush to actually you know uh, dreaming big and, and trying to go big uh, with limited resources and um, so about two years ago uh, we got some support from the European Handball Federation for various development projects one of those projects was my own role as a general manager and then Lisa Regan our development officer as well so I guess we've gone from having say one person in the office who was trying to do everything Susan who, who was fantastic but it was one person trying to do it all on her own uh, to having now three staff that can actually work well together as a team so uh, we've had a lot of success in terms of development and you know bringing more people in and more schools playing and uh, I think you know for people that come to watch the games or people that are looking at results you really have to bear in mind there's 50 nations in Europe when we started off, we were ranked 50. Mm -hmm. okay. So the very, very bottom of the rung. And uh, we said, okay, what's achievable for us? People say, are you going to the Olympics? And you know, that's fantasy land for us. We'd like to go there one day, but right now we want to get from 50 at all. So in the last 18 months, we've gone from 50 to 40 in the wow. European rankings. And we've taken some heavy meetings on the way, and we're probably going to take some more heavy meetings on the way. But what the players understand is we're moving forward. Every time we take the court, it's another step forward in our performance and in our development. And uh, like I said, they're young. So what we're hoping is that five, 10 years from now, we're going to have a very experienced squad who play really high level handball and we'll be able to produce big results. So what would you say are the main maybe transferable skills for rugby, or I suppose rugby players, gay players, or even basketball players? Yeah, I think so. Like we, we looked at this ourselves internally and we thought there, there's definitely athletes out there playing sports to a reasonably high level in Ireland that they're not going to progress any further in their chosen sport. Um, and we launched this Green Giants talent transfer program for crossover athletes. Um, so far we've had a good bit of success with, with two basketball players coming in, Peter Madsen and uh, Brendan Marine, who both be high level basketball players but at different ends of the spectrum. Peter's at the end of his career in basketball, I would say, and Brendan was just starting off in his career. But what we found with them is that uh, defensively, they're very, very good. You know, they know about body position and all these kinds of things and how to move themselves about. Uh, they've got great jumping skills, you know, um, but the ball skills are very different, you know. So even though they, they love to dribble, that we don't want them to do that, even though it's part of our game. Yeah. So do, do that as a last resort. With the rugby guys, we find, you know, physicality, you know, very, very good, but also awareness of space, you know. I think um, being able to create space and keep space is really part of the key part of the game. And I think you find that in any invasion game, or soccer, basketball, rugby. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a transferable skill right across the board.